Thank you, Ustaz, for this nice presentation of Naat Sharif. Muhammad Ali Salatu Wasalam unveiled the transitory nature of this world and death and showed the grave to be a waiting room opening unto realm of eternal happiness. He left every heart teaching happiness regardless of place or time. Professor Muhammad Ahmed Qadri, as the founding director of the Islamic Educational and Cultural Research Center, which Research Center, which is a non-profit, non-political Ahl-Sunnah wal Jama'a organization founded in 2002. Dr. Kadri is a renowned scholar who taught at its local colleges as well as the University of Karachi for over 20 years. He has expertise both in modern education as well as traditional Islamic sciences having completed the Darsan Nizami an 18-year traditional Islamic education. He also owns a TV channel named Shifa TV in Canada and USA. Now, I request Honorable Professor Muhammad Ahmed Kadri to come on stage to give his speech on Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, Tasawwuf and the Contemporary Challenges. Thank you. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله على يعني ما الشاملة وعلى آله الكاملة والصلاة والسلام على نبي المختار محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أما بعد فقط الله تبارك وتعالى في قرآن المجيد مخبر وآمنا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I am personally thankful to brother Sayy was director of uh, Rumi Forum Karachi. By the fraction of seconds, when he came to me, what happened, I will share with you, inshallah. But going through a formal appreciation for a renowned Qali, Sheikh Mahmoud Sayyid Ibrahim, mashallah, in the Ohanyukum Ohanyukum, the Sheikh of the Hazel Kima, the Lakala. I'm really honored to see all these different trees. Who are here to get a message of peace and love with Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in such a manner to make a difference in the world and draw a line of demarcation between hypocrites and genuine mu'mineen, those are called Sufi people in the world. I witness, as I had opportunity to live in the U.S. and Canada for a long time, alhamdulillah, while established after September 11, a well-known non-political Non-profit organization in U.S. 501c3 status in the U.S. Islamic Educational Cultural Research Center. Luckily, I had direct relationship and interaction with Rumi Forum, 
And I will attest to their work. They work there for humanity, not for a specific group or sect. For the sake of Allah and His Rasul to promote name in with such a manner that they consider character building, perform their duties, go for the humanity and make a change so that the person would be accepting Islam with their heart and minds as this was a tradition of so people in the world. Unfortunately, we are facing so many challenges in the world and the stereotype is so common especially in North America and Europe that everybody who has the name of Muhammad he is considered as extremist or hyphenated something else but let's see why the world is going through such a critical position and what are the reasons behind all these activities or actions. I must mention Imam Ghazali's reference here in Minhajul Abidin, a famous book of Ghazali, while he says about the society, he says, if an individual doesn't have any interaction with pious people, the people whose hearts are alive, the whole society will be ruined and threshed out. This is the reason of the decline of Muslim women in the world. Unfortunately, this is happening with the Muslim world. We search peace in conferences. We look for peaceful settlement in the world through theoretical approaches. I'm a political scientist, alhamdulillah. Being a student of political science, I must say that we always teach on the theories of democracy, controlled democracy, Socialism, Communism, Marxism, Gaelic Socialism, Liberalism, Trade Unionism, so many things in the world. But let me tell you one thing which is, uh, which is specifically true. And a renowned scholar from Columbia University, US, who is alive, is still alive, Dr. Theodore Wright Jr. While I was in a conference, he was Studied with me when he appeared just after September 11. What he said, let me quote here. He said, The decline of Muslim Ummah is not due to extremism, but the reason is that they haven't respected their Prophet, that's why they are suffering all these diseases. That's why the Quran says, Wama yuzun Allah Rasul, for Lana Mullah, for Dunya Allah. Who are the people? Who are we? 80 percent translations of Quran in English, are the sources of misleading of Muslim Ummah. I must mention here. The Quran Ayah, which refers to the characteristics of Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. The ayah and the trunk of Ta'a in Arabic, Alhamdulillah Sheikh is Mawlud, and the Mawlud Huna, MashaAllah. Ta'a, Yadiyo Ta'a, cannot be taken only just to follow. Sometimes it is used for another meaning. Unfortunately, the translators have ignored a true meaning. That's why a true follower of Beloved Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a Shaykh Ahmad Radar Barayli, an Afghan Summa Barayli, he mentioned, and it was reproduced or translated in Alhamdulillah, I got it published from US, the translation of Majid Ola, Abdul Majid Ola, the translation is clear. Holy 
Prophet Muhammad that the meaning of translation of ta doesn't mean to follow him. It means that don't care about him or don't listen to them. Only Prophet Muhammad cannot listen to or obey to hypocrites or non-Muslims or those who are against Islam. So these are very small things to be considered. And I would say that Tafsir al-Salami is a reference to me and how Tafsir al-Salami defines the term of Tasakuf. Let me share with you so that you could see how the Prophet Muhammad wanted to see a Muslim and Muslim boy. He never wanted to establish a state to be specified or known as monarch or king or continuing with authority. He just wanted to create a state with such a manner that the people would be identified by their characters. Rahama Bayahu. These are the people who love each other. For what ground? What are the reasons of their likeness and how they reject each other? This is important philosophy. Unfortunately, we did not consent to that. Salvi has pointed out in his tafsir that the people can be united or identified or can be put into a single circle. Those who love Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, those who love Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they become friends of Allah subhanahu wa taala. That's why Quran says, "Wala khawfun alayhi wala hum yasalun." Alayna awliya Allah ila khawfun alayhi wala hum yasalun. It means that there are two types of awliya. Awliya shayati, wa and awliya rahman. Only Allah. Who are these? And then the Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, while he was giving his son delivering speech to the people, he simply specified, he simply identified the mishaps of this world. He said that our hearts work for. And our hearts work for Rahman. It's up to us how we make orientation of our hearts. And for that, he started telling the people or his khula for messengers to see that zikr, zikr is the best way to make up. Your positions, and from that situation, from that situation, we see all those friends of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They spent their lives. They wanted to make a culture of zikr in the world. That's why I'm a witness to Rumi Forum. They also go for zikr, Alhamdulillah. They work for zikr because. Most of the people of Nashpan, they are from Turkey, and they work for Nashpan Sinsila or chain of Nashpandiya. Today, I wanted to sum up or bring some basic points before you, so that we can understand what are the reasons of our decline. What is the reason of the decline of Muslim Ummah? Muslim Ummah, obviously, performs Salah, pays Zakah, and go for the basic duties, but still, we are in search of destination. Still, we need to to see a general success. Not artificial intelligence usage. 
a genuine success. And that genuine success comes through a single method, a single way. And that way is to follow Quranic principles and the life of Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam.
هذا الشيء قادم من الجيش رحمة الله تعالى عليه. There is dark or deep or hard which locates problems of inner circulation. That's why we see how Sufi people work for the humanity and how they promoted Islam. The term of Zikr was promoted deliberately through Quran. And that Zikr is a way to purify heart and minds as well as proper healing of humanity. And this is the Zikr which is a power in the non-Muslim world which is showing itself like Alhamdulillah subhanahu wa ta'ala so many Sufi people were working in North America or European countries so many non-Muslim people those who come and join Zikr circles while they have treatment and healing when they come out from there they say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah neither it is magic nor it is kind of any transformation in your blood or heart very simple. They concentrate with their eyes, they keep their eyes on heart. That's why Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Ta'ala mentioned that a true gentle Sufi or wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he has power, then he would never seek power. He would look at the face of a person and he would create impact on the heart and the person would be thinking as a Sufi is thinking because there is interaction between Sufi and ordinary person. This interactive behavior has, is missing from society. This is missing from society. And this is a great cause. Because these are the people who promote love, humanity and peace in the world and they teach how to create culture of tolerance in the world. They have been eliminated. Unfortunately, the people who are extremists, they are taking place of Sufi people. And these Sufi people, their behavior is a bit different. Their behavior is different. They would never come forward to fight against. They would never teach their followers to kill the people. They are the people who are here to promote love. Because Holy Prophet Muhammad never ordered to kill his enemies. This is Sunnah and the same Sunnah is being continued with these Sufi people in the world. Now, this is time to undertake the responsibility to see how we could present a genuine message of Islam before non-Muslims. The best way would be to study Quran to know actual istilahat or technologies of Quran to go to ulama alhamdulillah we have so many renowned scholars here alhamdulillah we are lucky we are lucky here mashallah so many scholars are here you could watch them on the QTV all the time they are here alhamdulillah they are alive alhamdulillah and scholars from universities I can see also here this is our responsibility to present a positive, positive picture of Islam. Although we claim about certain things, but I have so many, uh, so many points in my mind to present before you. But I would simply say that this is time to listen to our scholar who has come from Turkey. Just to this is your, uh, my brother says, favor for me that he has given me this time and opportunity to be before you. But I would simply say, if we want to promote Islam in the world, the basic duty of our presence in this conference is to know how to justify ourselves to be 
a genuine follower of Islam, a genuine follower of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For this, we will have to have knowledge of Islam through a basic source of tasawwuf. Tasawwuf, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, is a great source of inspiration and great source of learning. So we should, we must go to them, have interaction with them. Then we will see that these are not the people who always use strong or language linguistic approaches. They are the people who turn hearts of the people and make a clear difference in the society. This is missing from our society. Let's hope, inshallah, the upcoming days of the entire world would be knowing that we are living here for the love of the Prophet and respect for humanity so that we could come together and meet the challenges of the emerging emerging world which is called Stay the world. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you.